I'm about fed up with these beets. And these yellow squash are getting on my last nerves because they wilt. We water them every day and they wilt every day. And they've barely produced any squash. This time of year, your garden can be full of difficult choices. You've, you've got things that you've planned that haven't done so well. They still have time to, to pick it up, but that hasn't done well so far. You have things that have maybe worn out, have completely exhausted their ability to grow food. Like this sweet corn, for example. Some of it stayed small. Of course, we had to, plant, we had to re replant it late because the rabbit ate it. But then some of it grew. We had ears that got tore up by a squirrel. Either way, what's here is it. It's not producing any more corn. And the simple fact is we don't like wasting our space. So we've got tough choices to make. Like that squash and the zucchini next to it, by the way, that I didn't show you. They have time to maybe regenerate or pick it up or whatever. Or we could just rip it out and plant some more seeds. Which is what we chose to do here in this bed and a bed over here just like it. These were full of top crop green beans, which is a, a very quick uh, bush bean and they're done it was over so we replanted it and now we have blue lakes already sprouting and ready to grow sometimes you gotta make that tough choice and it's right now's the time you gotta do it figure that out right you have difficult decisions to make you gotta you got a very limited time to do it in and right now you still have time to make that tough choice to replant some seeds and get it going and luckily squash are super easy you just get in there get your hand in there rip them out and get it cleaned out right just keep ripping it out and it's all just gonna get torn up and thrown out here to the side unproductive plants will just get ripped out get a little bit of weeds out and you rip this out too now those beets over there they're a different story they have been the bane of my existence this year because i love them so much you ever feel like that like honestly it's kind of that way in life really the the people you love the most or the things you love the most also have the ability to hurt you the most and frustrate you the most right and it's true about anything i love carolina basketball it can also frustrate me because i expect them to be perfect right this my beats are kind of the same way that i love them so very much <laughs> that they're frustrating me because i love to eat them i love pickled beets around here right this is pickled beets is something that i just adore and because it's made it really difficult to get more pickled beets this year because those have, those beets have been frustrating me. Like, put in a lot of work. You get down here, you work the soil, uh, you, you put in fresh fresh dirt in your raised beds, you fertilize it, you thin the beets, and you water them really well, and something comes along and eats on them. Uh, you know, as they're sprouting, maybe they don't germinate as well as you'd hope they did. Uh, then maybe they get too hot, right? And it just, there's been so many frustrating things that happen with the beets this year that I'm giving them as much time as I can, but I could just rip them out, so just pull up what's there, we have whatever's there, and then plant something new. Which is kind of what I'm working on here in these squash, which, ugh, there's more roots in here than I thought there was gonna be, but we deal with roots in this, in these raised beds, honestly. And these These roots, I'll show you. See, all these roots just keep coming up because there's a lot of honeysuckle here to our west. Like just right here, all this honeysuckle. And so it's just getting all, it just grows up inside this, this, uh, this these beds and so many roots just constantly. So that's why we use this thing right here. This is a handy dandy little hand tool that just can keep shredding everything out, right? But now is the time that you gotta make those tough decisions. Find a spot that's unproductive, right? Find a bed that's unproductive and figure out what your food growing goals are for that space. For instance, these just haven't worked out. I don't know if we didn't get enough fertilizer in them or what, they started out okay. Eh, went, just didn't fit, just didn't go. So we gotta figure out for that space, for those raised beds, for those spots in the garden, for that spot where the beets are at. What do I wanna grow there, right? What? else do I want to grow them in general and what spaces do we want to have for the fall garden because it's still just a smidge early for the fall garden but <laughs> I have spaces for my fall garden stuff all right like right here I've got nine grow bags of potatoes they're gonna be coming out in a couple weeks or less okay they're gonna be done it's gonna be over I've got a green stalk or two up there that's almost over 
right? Now I also have a couple of green stalks that are already over. So you gotta figure out the timing of what you wanna plant in your fall garden. If you're even doing fall garden, some people just simply don't do it and that's okay, that's your choice. I believe that everybody should do it because it's the simplest form of gardening. But what if you don't, it's okay. But like, so this raised bed here has got green beans planted in it, I'm getting ready to sprout. And this one right here has got some zucchini that needs to come out. We just simply haven't gotten enough squash and zucchini this year. Uh, we, we actually eat quite a few yellow squash and zucchini. A lot of people may not, we really do. And we actually chop and freeze a lot as well if we can. We haven't been able to this year because they haven't worked out. They faced a lot of pressure early. I think it just stunted them and we probably should have already pulled them, but they had some, a little bit of fruit growing. Now those right there are done. We do have three other squash plants. These squash plants were, were started and ready to plant after the garlic came out and they're doing wonderful. As you can see here, big beautiful plants producing quite a bit of squash. So those are awesome. They're gonna really help us out in the old squash department, right? But we do want more and I really need some zucchini. Now, when you're looking to figure out what it is you're trying to, what it is you still wanna grow, okay? You have to look from where you're at now when you're viewing this video or when you're making your decision. And then also when your uh, first frost date is because that's gonna matter. And maybe sometimes you take a little risk and try to figure out, do I really think it's gonna frost then? or is history telling me, recent history telling me that I might have an extra couple of weeks. <laughs> Good possibility. And when you're thinking about those things, kind of think, well, does what you're wanting to plant, does it have to have warm weather or can it handle a light frost? Like carrots, you guys have seen, we had a wonderful carrot harvest recently. And if you did not see that carrot harvest video, you should go watch the carrot harvest video because we, harvested 176 carrots over 11 pounds of carrots right here and two little raised bed planters on our back in our patio so angela k replanted them right she just planted them yesterday and she put this this um mosquito netting over it actually so they can get some water but also that way a squirrel can't get in here and disturb them <laughs> and dig in the, the dirt and, and mess them up. And we got these two planters full of carrots again and they can handle some cooler weather. But they also need some warmer weather for the seeds to germinate. So now is a perfect time to plant carrots. Or maybe even parsnips if you want parsnips. I might, I might plant some parsnips in a grow bag just to see how they do because they're a fascinating thing. What they're they're super delicious. They're super healthy, and they need like four months of grow time. <laughs> okay, but they also need cold weather um, to get frosted on their their the, the tops because they grow like a carrot. Because the somehow or another, like when they when the greens get frosted on, actually make, like activates the sugars or something inside the root itself, and so that's actually when you get your best flavored parsnip. <laughs> so it's a it's a funny thing, but like. Now, if you want to plant parsnips, you better do it now. But they're not a they're not an entry level growing thing, to be honest with you. So you do have to decide what it is you're looking for, what your goals are. Remember, so like we need some more beans, so we planted more beans. We've got beans growing. So I can go plant some more, a few more seeds, maybe in some in a green stalk to get it done, and we'll be good there. But when do you choose to give up on a, on a vegetable that you're growing that you really love, like these beets? Are there beets growing in here? Yes. Are they small? Yes. <laughs> Am I gonna get very much out of this whole bed right here? Probably not. See, that thought process can be maddening. Whereas I really don't wanna give up on beets. Could I, in theory, replant beets there? Yes, I could. But you also have to remember, if something, we'll say, we'll say it's 70 days. Let's just say something is 70 days to uh, hearts of maturity, right? <sighs> Your days get shorter. Well, we're still plenty of light right now, but how long until you get below that 14 hours of sunlight, 13 and a half hours of sunlight? that's when you actually see your growth start to slow down and it gets harder to produce fruit or whatever vegetable you're trying to grow. Like if you're trying to grow tomatoes, it's harder to produce a tomato once that 
once that uh, light gets too low. Harder to produce green beans once that light gets too low. Now, if they're already growing and already producing, they can finish growing out, but it's hard to produce. I can get a blossom to actually produce once you get too low. But there are things that do really well in that, like peas. We're probably, <laughs> probably gonna rip those beets out and replant it with some, with a uh, determinate uh, small variety, bush variety of sugar snap peas. Because that spot there, it does get some sun. It does get some shade. So it, they, they shouldn't get too hot. But if you're looking at a spot, if you're looking at a vegetable, by the way, to replant this time of year, that you want to go into the fall, but start growing now when it's hot, find one that's really heat heat tolerant, okay? Find one that's heat tolerant. And you can typically find one, but when you're looking at the seeds, if you're looking online at seeds, look in the description and see if it says that it's heat tolerant, that will help you out dramatically. So while we aren't getting what we're looking for out of spaces, we do have a t have a chance still to make sure those spaces are not a waste this year. So that's what I'm gonna encourage you to do, is do this while you still have time. You still have a chance, but your time is running out. So make, make those tough calls, figure out what it is that hasn't been successful, that you still wanna grow, and what you still have time to grow. So thank you guys so much for watching, I do appreciate it. My name is Jason, this is Art of Creation Homestead. We love y'all, God bless you and goodbye.